Hello everybody, it's Connie again with another uh, Baby Step tutorial. Um, this time I'm just going to give you um, a tip on uh, having a reference photo in your projects so that you know what something looks like. Um, a lot of times we will make projects real quickly and put something together and save it to our computer and then we open up the project and we see all these things on our mat and we're like, what the heck was I making? Uh, I'll bring up my uh, my, my little uh, SVG Cuts Advent Calendar that I didn't get to make this year, but I hopefully will make next year. But, you know, I make the different pages, um, you know, f this is for the back, um, then I make the a red page and the green page and, and a white page, and then I'm like, uh, you know, I can't remember what this looks like. So, um, what I'll do too is I'll also bring in um, the um, the video link in my notes section down here at the bottom and also the product page down here at the bottom let me bring over my other um, page here I have I've brought up the actual page uh, where the calendars at because I wanted to um, to show you where I got that picture at and so what I did is I I took this this little photo and then I just clicked on larger image and then this is the, um, the actual picture that I saved to bring in to make the cut so that I could look at it and see exactly what it was supposed to look like. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a, in a minute. And then um, they also had, um, and I can't remember now exactly where I found it, but they had another image. Let me get rid of this. So in my project page for this advent calendar, if I go, you see I've made my pages across here across the top. Um, and then I've named one preview only and then this is where I have my pictures and you can see them better if you uncheck outline shapes over here to the right and then go down to the contrast mat that's when you can really see what the pictures look like um, so when I'm getting ready to make this next year uh, you know I won't necessarily have to go to the product page if I don't want to I can just open it up and say, oh, that's what that's supposed to look like. I had forgotten. So uh, it's really nice to have that preview page. And then usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll lock the images on the preview page and say something like a uh, preview only or don't cut so that you'll know that this, this is not for cutting. This, this is just for my benefit so I can see, you know, what it looks like. Um, I also did this on um, a new project that I'm working on now. Um, it's a little bird that I had seen on Etsy and I wanted to make it um, myself so if I switch this to the contrast you can see that what I did is I just took the picture from the um, the Etsy when I saw it on Etsy and put it in as here as a preview and then put it on its own page and this one just has to happens to be at the beginning and I called it preview photo and then that way I can when I go to look at my um, my pieces to cut you know, if I didn't have the preview photo in there, and even though this is called Circle Bird, I would be going, what are all these strips supposed to make? And um, and because I have my little preview photo mat, then I know that, oh, this is my Circle circle Bird. And then down here in my notes section, I always put, you know, my notes in a, and I'll say where I found it and everything. And another good thing is if you make, make the cut files to share, it's really good if you'll open up the notes section and just at least put in your forum name um, or your blog just so that we know who you are because I know when I make things um, and then I post pictures on my blog or the forum I like to give credit where credit's due and just you know let people know where I got the file from I mean I know that's not necessary but you know it just is a is a nice little thing to do so that's just nice to keep that in information down there uh, in that note section I love that note section so um, I'm gonna come over here to another project um, that I saw on the forum uh, around Christmas time and I also put the PDF link down here in the notes section just in case I ever need it um, later uh, but a lot of times you know with with links on the internet they could suddenly disappear and so I might go back next year to get this PDF and then it's gone and of course I could have saved the PDF on my computer but there again, you know, where would I find it unless I kept it right with the Make the Cut project. So that's again where this preview sort of page picture thing really comes in handy. So I'm going to get rid of that note section because we'll need that gone to see this. And what this particular, the 
picture that I took for this particular instance was the PDF. So there was a PDF page, and let me switch this to not outline shapes and put it back to contrast. And um, so I can see right here within my Make the Cut file and not have to go to the internet uh, and see exactly how, you know, this goes together. So let me bring up the, uh, the web page for that PDF. And this is the PDF as it looks um, on the internet. And so I don't have to remember this page or bookmark it in a separate place and I can have it right in Make the Cut. Well, um, I'm using a Firefox browser and I need this to be smaller so that I can uh, get my screenshot of it. So I'm just gonna, um, well, I'm pushing the minus button down here and that's suppo suddenly not working. Uh, let's see here, because that's actually what I did. Well, I thought that's what I did. Maybe that's not what I did. Um, anyway, usually I, I make this a little bit smaller so that I can get the whole thing because that's what I actually got. And I think maybe what I had done was pulled up the PDF and actually got this off of the PDF itself. So um, I guess that's not going to be a good example. And uh, I'm actually not sure if I could find that quick enough for you on my computer. Let me just see if I can. If I can. Uh, if I can't, no big deal. Um, go to my PDFs. Date modified. Uh, I don't remember. Let's go back and see what the name of that people. It was called, see I'm not even really sure what it was named, uh, so I might not even be able to find it. Sometimes I'll put it in the folder, let me go to my holiday folder. Okay, I actually did put it in the holiday folder. So here's the actual PDF, the 3D Christmas tree instructions. So let me open up that PDF. Yeah, that's what I did, so let me, let me maximize this. Um, so here's the, PDF, the actual PDF for it, and so I don't have to open the actual PDF, and like I said, as you saw me do, just oh, where is it, and go try to find it. Um, I'm going to make this smaller uh, to where I can get the most of it in, and I decided that this little finished picture here I didn't really need, because I knew what that would look like, so I think I actually plus and made that just a little bit bigger, so that this is actually um, the, the screenshot uh, what I need. Now if you have Windows XP or Vista or it might be just Vista and Windows 7 um, you'll have the snipping tool um, and I actually have uh, instructions on my blog um, where you can, if you don't have the snipping tool um, just do a search for snipping tool post and I actually give links on uh, pages where you can actually still go and get the snipping tool if you don't have it. But usually the snipping tool is under your um, all programs and then your uh, let's see accessories and then you'll come down here and you'll see your snipping tool right there. But I I usually just keep my snipping tool right down here on my taskbar so I can get to it easily. If you don't have a snip the snipping tool, you can of course push a uh, print screen on your keyboard and then bring up paint and make your picture that way just as long as you get a PNG or a JPEG picture to bring in to make the cut. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. I'm going to use the snipping tool. So I'm going to double click and bring up my snipping tool and here's my little snipping tool. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, I can't really have it on this screen or otherwise I'll snip it. Well let me see if I can keep it up here and maybe I won't. So then what I do is I just, in, in, within the snipping tool there's actually a couple of options. Um, I usually use the rectangle slit snip because then that way I can choose what I want to snip. You can do a window snip or a full screen snip or a freeform snip, but I usually use the rectangle snip so that's what I've got clicked. And then when I'm ready to use it, I'm just going to say new. And then what's going to ha happen is my um, my screen's going to get white, whited out or like grayed out. You can see right here. And then I'm just going to use my cursor. And I really don't need this instructions right here, so I'm just not going to use that. And then I'm just going to come down right here like this and make sure I get all those words. And you see the red outline around that. And then I'm just going to let go. And then that's going to bring up a box. Um, change the snipping toolbox. Um, 
and show you actually what you snipped. So here's a scroll bar and you can see the whole thing that I've snipped here. And the nice thing about the snipping tool, now I can go ahead and, and save it and say save snip and then save it somewhere on my computer, but I don't have to when I'm using make the cut. All I have to do is copy it. So I'm just going to say edit copy. And that's all I have to do. And then I'm just going to X out of it. And then I'm going to come back to um, let me get back to my, my project here. Get rid of my browser. And let's just uh, make a new page um, just so I can show you how to do this. Um, and I'm still in contrast mode. Um, I'm actually going to move it back to green just so it, maybe it's a little bit easier to see. I'm just going to double click my mouse just anywhere. And then the next thing I need to do is come up here to the top where it says pixel trace and uh, a box will come up here and this is just showing a, a file on my computer. I don't know why this particular one comes up. Um, and it doesn't matter what's over here because this little box here is what you're looking for. And you're just going to say paste. And what that's going to do is it's going to paste what you just snipped in here. And so anytime that you do this where you're just wanting a picture to, for reference, you're going to come over here to the threshold and put it up as high as it'll go, which is 255, and you say apply changes, because all you need is just the box, the size of the box for what, you're, what you snipped, and then that's all you do, and you say apply changes, and then you say, uh, before you say import, it's very important to, right here where it says set images texture, you click that, check that, and say import. And then what that's done is it's brought in, um, if I change back to contrast here, it's brought in that page so that I can uh, see how to put my tree together later and don't have to open up something else. But it's a little small, and I really want it to be as big as it you know can fit comfortably on the make the cut page so that I can really see it you know later. So how we fix that is while it's magic selected, I just clicked it left clicked it one time, you come up here to the top where this little um, box is with all the X, the Y, the W, the, and the H, which is the width and the height, you make sure that that little lock is locked. And you can put this in the width box or the height box. And I'll just put it in the width box. And I'm going to get rid of that, um, what was in there. And I'm going to make it bigger. So let's just first, let's do 125% because if we would go 95%, 75%, it's going to make it smaller, but if we do 125%, 110%, it's going to make it bigger. So let's just try 125%, you type that on your keyboard, and then once you've got it typed in there, you click your enter button on your keyboard. Now what that's done is you see by the magic um, selection box how big it's made it. But you know I can tell just by that that it's not taking up my whole mat and I really want it to be as big as it can be so I can see it later. So I'm just going to um, come up here to the undo button and just undo it. That's just the simplest way to do it. My uh, little numbers are still highlighted in the width box. So I'm going to go up to say 150 percent make sure you put the percent sign in there otherwise otherwise it's not going to work and then I'm just going to click enter on my keyboard again now that time it brought it in pretty big it fits on the map pretty good and I like that so I like that it's that big um, so that's what I want well but now you know the box is really big and my picture is still really little so um, what you have to do is you right click and then you say change color or texture and then you say select texture and then you have to remember what you, the size you made it, whether you made it smaller or whether you made it bigger. Now sometimes this little tile texture box could be checked. For this particular ex example, since I'm not using it as a texture on a file, I don't want that checked. And you pretty much don't want that checked for any time you bring a little picture in for your project like I'm talking about the tip today. So I just uncheck that and then down here at the very bottom it says scale. And I'm going to just drag that slider up until it says 150 because that's what we used um, when we brought it in and got it the right size. And sometimes it's really hard to get right at 150, like right now it says 147. You can use your arrows on your keyboard at this point to touch right or left and get it to scale to exactly what you want it to be. And then I'm going to say OK. And then what that's done is it's uh, changed the size of the picture or the texture to 
to where it looks exactly like it I need it and, um, and like I said um, this is a new page but I just renamed my page right here PDF instructions and of course how at the top how you rename your page is you just right click on it and you say um, rename and a little box will come up see here rename page and you just change it to whatever you want it to, to be called and say OK. Um, so that's how I brought it in for that particular project. Now there was another uh, project um, that I had I had seen uh, online um, and I'll bring that up right here and this was a little shadow box card tutorial um, that a lady had on her blog and so I made a make the cut file um, and called it the fold flat shadow box A2 card and started making uh, you know my, my card sections uh, I think she actually used uh, let me bring that up in her instructions she actually used uh, a die cut uh, yeah, this big shot to cut her circle but of course with make the cut we don't have to do that and so um, that's why I like seeing other projects on blogs and making them make the cut friendly so I actually made a uh, here's here's my actual uh, these are the two pieces I would cut for to make the project uh, it's a pretty simple project and then of course in the note section I always put um, that I made it make the cut friendly I put the website of the blog where I found the um, the little uh, file um, and then I'll sometimes give measurements in there too, um, you know, if I don't want to forget certain measurements. Uh, like I, like in here at the bottom, I said that it fits an A2 size envelope. Envelope. Uh, so in this particular project, I have a a, a page, and I made a lot of extra um, uh, fronts so that when I get ready to cut and make this card, I can make a whole bunch of different kinds. So that's why I have that here. Um, and then um, I have a preview photo page and so this is where in, because we're in contrast mode of course we can see that these are the uh, the pictures that I brought in to remind me of what this project look like looks like and that's so that when I'm back at my computer and I'm cutting my little netbook and I'm cutting my files um, I don't have to go to the internet uh, you know because what if I happen to go back one day and my lo and behold my internet's not working and I can't you know uh, see the picture I don't want that to keep me from cutting and so I have my picture right here and make the cut which is great so we're gonna add another picture um, to that particular file just so I can show you again and I'm just gonna scroll down here um, and let's just let's just take this little picture here where she's got this little bow attached to the, the front here um, and I'm just gonna bring up my snipping tool again uh, and then I'm gonna say uh, new and then my screen will turn white and then I'll just drag around uh, just to get that um, the little picture that I want to bring in and then all I have to do is say edit edit up here and say copy and then I can get rid of that I don't need it anymore get rid of the web page and I'm back in here at my project and let's bring that back to the green uh, mat so um, to bring that in all I have to do is come up here at the top again where the pixel trace is uh, over here to the right where it says Twain and Paste, I just click Paste. That's going to bring the picture in. But of course, because we're just using it as a, as a picture, sort of like a print and cut thing, um, even though we're not cutting it, we're just using it for reference, um, I'm going to change the threshold to the highest it goes, which is 255. Say Apply Changes. Uh, and then we want to make sure we check the check Set Images Texture. And then we say Import. And then what that is, it's brought this little little picture in here, um, so that I can see what that looks like. Go back to the contrast mat, and then I can see that little picture there. Actually, I sort of like it that size. Um, uh, so let me do this. Let me do that one more time. I'll come back in, and then I'll change the size of this next one. So let's come down here and take uh, this one right here. So let's bring up my snipping tool again uh, say new screen turns white grab that little picture right there um, edit say copy then we can get once we've copied it we can uh, get rid of it and this works with anything this, uh, any picture on the internet anything that you can snip you can bring in to make the cut as a, as a little picture like this so I'm gonna put my cursor right there because this is where I want it to come in 
come up here to the top pixel trace again say paste it will bring it in but I need to change my threshold to 255 because all we want is just the box um, where the picture is going to uh, fit and we're going to say set images texture and we're going to say import and so then that's little pictures right here so let's just say um, let's actually just make I showed you how to make it bigger uh, let's